Hello and welcome to Money, 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 your weekly personal finance date with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Let me start by wishing all of our viewers a very, very happy new year. May 2022 be safe, healthy and fulfilling for everyone out there. Now the big question, what will this year be like for money and investing? What are the trends to watch out for and the products to perhaps keep in mind with respect to your personal finance portfolio? Well, joining me to answer those and many other questions in this New Year special are Kalpen Parikh, CEO and MD of DSP Investment Managers, and Anshu Kapoor, President and Head of Investment Management at Edelweiss Wealth. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining in. Good afternoon to you and thank you for taking out the time. So let me start by wishing both of you, of course, a very happy new year. From the health point of view, we're still sort of in slightly murky waters, but hopefully it'll get better. Kalpen, your first thoughts as you've looked at trends of 21, the way people have come to the equity market through funds or through direct investing, what comes to mind and, and what's the topmost on your mind when you think of money in 2022? <clears throat> happy new year to you and your viewers will be. Thanks for inviting me for the show. I feel uh, investors are getting more serious about making money and uh, having a very disciplined way of investing. And that has been uh, one important uh, positive observation for uh, the last year. Of course, in every bull market, uh, there are many uh, investors who come for different reasons, but the segment which is coming for disciplined long-term investing is rising. And to me, that is a very heartening fact. Uh, no doubt, um, whatever we have invested in has made money. It also does create an illusion of certainty in an asset class, which actually inherently is a volatile asset class. So I think uh, 2022 will have uh, two important uh, drivers to be uh, watchful about. One, uh, do we see an extension of the trend of uh, very solid earnings growth that we have seen in the last one year? Uh, the earnings growth uh, in last one year is something that we have not seen for the last 10, uh, 12 years. So uh, whether we see an extension of that, because we will see margins coming back under pressure as uh, cost structures normalize after huge cost savings during the COVID wave, number one. Commodity prices have risen, so again, you know, that will put pressure on margins. So if earnings growth uh, slow down and uh, disappoint the current valuations, that is something which will lead to volatility, and investors should be wary of that, number one. The second thing is valuations. A uh, large chunk of uh, comfort on valuations is on account of one, the earnings growth that I mentioned. Second, a uh, very easy uh, uh, interest rates uh, globally. And that is turning now because of inflation and central bank actions world over. In interest rates are likely to rise uh, in the course of next few quarters. And if that has a bearing on uh, bringing valuations down, uh, valuations are nothing but gravity after all. Uh, that can lead to more volatility. So for all investors who have uh, been happy investors in the last two years, the next year will be a real test match and uh, we will have to be uh, fairly disciplined in our approach of investing and have reasonable expectations. Okay, so strap up for what may be a slightly more volatile ride and be disciplined. I guess that's the big takeaway. Got that, Kalpen. Let me welcome Anshu into the conversation as well. Anshu, Kalpen is right. Uh, you know, the equity market was so charitable, 25% on the index, much more on individual stocks. So what say? Will 2022 be as good? Hi, Surbhi. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Yes, absolutely. My friend Kalpen is very right. Uh, we've seen a phenomenal rise in equity valuations and equity markets. So it, it appears all too easy when you see all of this. Uh, there are definitely headwinds, and but I must point out, uh, I am very positive. We are very positive. There is definitely a lot of tailwind as well. And I think we have to put things in perspective. Uh, listen, when we see the last five to 10 years, for a very long time, the global markets were doing very well, but India perhaps was not doing so well for a variety of reasons. So there was a lot of catch up, especially from an earnings perspective. And uh, therefore, I see um, several drivers for growth, Surbi, if I may say, for India per se. I think uh, the GDP, obviously, we know that this year is expected to be anywhere between nine to nine and a half percent. Consumption remains very, very strong. Uh, some of the sectors that are booming is IT, IT services. Uh, well, uh, IT exports or services exports this year are supposed to be about $200 billion. Overall, merchandise uh, exports are booming, right? Real estate finally has revived in India. Residential real estate, which was down for about eight years, seems to be revising, revi uh, reviving. 
mm-hmm. and uh, and add to that a booming FDI market, a booming private equity market. So I think the signs are very very positive, so to speak. Mm. Obviously, valuations uh, will go up and down, mm. but what I see is on the horizon, at least for India, a very positive economic environment. Okay. Fair enough. So uh, good to have that optimistic viewpoint. You know, gentlemen, before I start talking about uh, the approach to the portfolio for this year, given all the variables, I want to get your take very quickly on two very clear trends that played out in 21 and, you know, ask you whether they'll continue in 22. One of those trends was DIY investing. A lot of people were moving away from mutual funds, doing their own stock portfolios and small case portfolios in some cases. Uh, The other trend was going global. Uh, and we saw that play out as well in terms of uh, just the exposure to whether it was a US market or several other markets. So will that continue and is that healthy? How should you look at it, uh, Anshu? Well, Surbhi, um, to answer the second part of the question, yes, inter- international diversification makes a lot of sense. India finally is 2.5% of the world market cap. So why not look at the remaining 97.5%? It makes a lot of sense. And fortunately, a lot of good products are now available to Indian investors. So therefore, it makes a lot of sense to diversify internationally. It diversifies your country risk, currency risk, and also gives you access to themes or investing ideas, which you may not have available in India so far. So I think that's a great thing. As far as this DIY investing is concerned, I think uh, uh, we are we are j- just at the inflection point. We've just begun, actually. Uh, India, after all the growth that we saw last year in num- number of folios, number of DMAT accounts and all, we are only about eight, 85 million odd folio uh, DMAT accounts or so. So I think there's a lot of growth available in front of us. Uh, as far as you know, uh, this DIY is concerned, it's, it's actually very fascinating. If you, if you look at the way investors have taken up to investing, Uh, It's very encouraging. It will go a long way in building an equities culture in this country, a savings and investing culture in the country. And I believe that trend will pick up as more and more investors come into the fold and as more and more tools become available to them. So I think it's very, very encouraging. Okay, got that. Kalpain, come in on this. You know, I'll I'll start with actually the whole uh, international fund uh, sort of uh, bonanza that's playing out right now. There are so many new offerings that are out there, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, feeder funds that are going into global funds or whether it's index funds or ETFs. But why I worry is at a time when so many of these products, particularly on U.S. technology stocks, are becoming available, we are seeing a big cool-off in exactly that side of the market, uh, the cool-off on the NASDAQ. So do investors have a reason to worry in 22? So, uh, so the, my view is uh, investing is cyclical and uh, themes keep changing. Uh, when I look at international investing for my own portfolio, the you know only observation I make, uh, which makes me invest globally, is India has 30-35% in lenders. And uh, when you invest in global markets, the largest weights are uh, technology and uh, healthcare and consumer businesses. So when you you know blend the two, you get a fairly complementary diversified base. When you buy India, it is typically financials and consumption. When you buy global companies, it is automation, it is digitization, it is healthcare, it is innovation. So uh, in a way, they complement each other. Number two, the cycles of each segments will keep fluctuating. If we were to- talking in 2016 and 17, those were the days you know when we were uh, coming after demonetization. The biggest narratives that were discussed was financialization of savings in India and a long runway and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, banking stocks were at six, seven, eight times price to book. And then in the next three, four years, uh, they underperformed and technology picked up, healthcare stocks picked up. So these cycles will continue. The good thing that, you know, I like is um, uh, global champion companies, uh, especially the tech companies which impact uh, businesses around the world. They are making us talk today uh, in this format. If if Zoom was not there, we would not be talking uh, in a seamless way like this. These companies were very frothy one year back because the narrative gets priced in very fast, especially in years when investors are happy to press the trigger and invest their money on narratives. So all these stocks uh, ran up a lot. So many companies were at 10, 20, 30 times price to sales, not price to equity. So they are cooling off right now. And to all investors, I would say that, you know, it is better to invest in themes or ideas when they are cooling off, 
not when the narrative is strong because if you and i are talking about that narrative it is already in the price so for global stocks i think the narrative is slowing down right now the last one year so i was just seeing today nasdaq uh, you know uh, some of these innovative companies globally that entire basket of portfolio is down 20 to 25% so you are better off investing in themes like this when they are coming down rather than when they are peaking but keep in mind that they should be a part of a very long term portfolio structure invest for 10 15 years take advantage of these great business models which are you know uh, impacting every part of the world so i would i would be very excited with with this trend of global investing picking up now there are two types of uh, reasons why one is investing one is past reason fundamentally the worst reason to invest in and the second is the complementarity that it offers to make our portfolios more resilient and less volatile uh, we did this analysis that if you blend nifty and uh, you know the global market msci world and you put the two together the long term returns more or less remain the same but the volatility comes down by 20% so that is the right reason for global investing not the last one or two years so i okay. i would be very excited and while we were, we are talking i was just seeing some data 48000 crores is the amount of money that through mutual funds is getting invested globally mm -hmm. either through feeder mm -hmm. funds or through di direct stocks okay well, and i think that's, that trend will continue uh, that that's a helpful stat actually to know that uh, this global diversification is bringing down volatility maybe not necessarily boosting return too much but at least the volatility in the portfolio comes down so that's something to keep in mind we will take a break on that note on the other side the conversation continues the critical question what should your portfolio look like for 2022 we'll ask our experts